Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today is the fifth part of the AI series where we're going to dynamically configure our NavMesh agents and our enemies based on a scriptable object. If you haven't checked out part four, go back and check that one out. The card's right here because we're building on that in this video. In the last video, we dynamically spawned the NavMesh agents at runtime. In this video, we're going to configure them correctly based on a scriptable object. This is a really important piece that you have to get because we're going to build on it on every video going forward in this series. It's how we're going to configure a bunch of stuff. So you really need to understand how this works. This is the foundational piece. We're not going to do anything crazy in this one, but you need to understand how it works. It allows you to do a bunch of cool stuff in the future. And we're going to do a bunch of cool stuff in the next videos, but we got to start with the foundation. So check this one out. Let's get started. Let's implement some scriptable objects. The first thing we're going to do is create the new script called enemy scriptable object. We'll make it a subclass of scriptable object. And what this is going to do is hold the base stats for an enemy. We can then modify those at the time of object creation to either buff up the enemy, set up the nav mesh agent, or do a whole bunch of other stuff. I'll add the create asset menu attribute to this class and set the file name to be enemy configuration and the menu name to be scriptable object forward slash enemy configuration. This allows us to, in the Unity editor in the project pane, right click, create scriptable object enemy configuration. So remember enemy had health, so I'll add public int health. Our enemy movement uses an AI update interval. So we'll add a public float AI update interval. And then I'll add all the configs that are set up on the nav mesh agent. There's the acceleration, the angular speed, the area mask, the avoidance priority, the base offset, the height, obstacle avoidance type, radius, speed, and stopping distance. I'll provide all of these some reasonable default value. This may seem silly, but in future tutorials, what we're going to do is add behaviors that need to be configured per enemy. And we'll set that up in this enemy scriptable object. If we head back over to the enemy class, we'll add a reference to the enemy scriptable object, public enemy scriptable object, enemy scriptable object, and we'll add a new public virtual void setup agent from configuration. I'm making it virtual in case in your game you want to subclass enemy with different enemy types. You can do that and still get the setup agent from configuration. While in general, I would recommend using object composition, meaning adding different behaviors on each enemy to differentiate which enemy does what instead of subclassing enemy, but that's still an option that you can do. In setup agent from configuration, we will do exactly that. Set all of the configurations of the nav mesh agent, the enemy, and the enemy movement from that scriptable object. So we'll assign agent acceleration to the value of enemy scriptable object acceleration, agent angular speed to the enemy scriptable object angular speed all the way down to the agent stopping distance. We'll also add a function public virtual void on enable and whenever the agent becomes enabled we will set up the configuration. We should do it on enable instead of on start because we're using object pooling with this enemy. So once they die, they will be disabled. And whenever we re-enable them, we should reset all of their stats. Quickly go back to setup agent from configuration and set up the movement update rate to be the enemy scriptable object AI update interval and set the health to be enemy scriptable object health. That way, whenever the enemy takes damage, which we'll be doing in the next video, they will not respawn with zero health. I really want to emphasize the power of having a configuration file for all of our enemies. This allows us to do a bunch of stuff like have a set of base stats that we can scale up if we want harder difficulties or scale down for easier ones. We can also use this to configure abilities and behaviors, but it's not just a configuration file. You can also add functions into the scriptable object to define behaviors and define responsibilities for this class that don't really make sense in another class. It might sound a little abstract right now, but I promise we're going to get into it in the next videos. We're going to do more and more stuff with the scriptable object to really showcase how powerful they are. If we go back to the Unity editor and right click in the project panel, we can go create scriptable object basic enemy. This will create an enemy configuration for our basic enemy. We'll rename it to be basic enemy so it's in alignment with our prefab. All the values here are sensible except for the speed. We had the enemy basic enemy moving at two units per second. We'll then select the basic enemy prefab and drag our basic enemy scriptable object to the enemy scriptable object reference on the enemy script. 
We'll make a new enemy type. First we'll drag the basic enemy into the scene. We'll scale up the model because we'll make this a taller enemy. We'll rename the object tall enemy. Change the height to 3 and the speed also to 3 so they will move faster. Next we'll create an enemy configuration, scriptable object. And we'll also name that tall enemy. We'll hook that up in the inspector to the enemy scriptable object reference. Then we'll drag the tall enemy back to the project panel and make it a prefab variant of the basic enemy. We'll go back to the navigation panel, which you can get to by going to Window AI Navigation in case you closed it. We'll select the Agents tab and create a new agent type by clicking the plus button. We'll name this Tall Enemy. We'll adjust the height to be 3 and the radius to be 0.33. We'll also adjust the radius on the enemy scriptable object to be 0.33 since we did not do that a second ago. The other important thing is that we set the height of the tall enemy in the enemy scriptable object to be 3 or they won't work correctly. Then we'll select the world geometry and copy paste one of the nav mesh surfaces and change the enemy type to tall enemy. And then we'll bake the nav mesh. We can see this enemy will have a lot harder time getting around because the second floor is too close to the ground for the 3 unit tall nav mesh agent to walk under it. So they will pass significantly differently than the basic enemy or the player. The last thing we'll do is select the enemy manager and drag the tall enemy variant to the list of enemy prefabs. If we then click play, we'll see all of the nav mesh agents spawn in random locations on the nav mesh that are still lockable to them. And we see that there are two different types of nav mesh agents spawned and we get three of the basic enemy and two of the tall enemy since we're using the round robin spawn method. As we run around underneath the second floor, the tall enemies have to repath a really long way around to try to get back to where we are. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video, and I hope you understand how to use scriptable objects to drive values on your components now. This is a foundational piece to stuff we're going to do in future videos, where we'll scale up enemies based on maybe a round, or I'm honestly, I'm not sure what we're going to do in that video yet, but we're going to do something where it's a less trivial, just apply values kind of thing. So you need to understand how this works before we can get into that though. So I really hope you've got that from this video. If you have any questions, if you have a suggestion for a different topic, or if you've implemented AI into your game as a result of watching this series, drop a comment down below and I'll see you on the next video.